Awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out here to listen to our discussion here. So we're going to present uh, our project, which was UV dimming contact lenses. We're really excited to talk about this, so uh, we'll uh, give you a quick overview of what we're going to go into before we dive into all the details here. So if, uh, next. So to start, we're going to go over an introduction and kind of talk about current uh, products on the market and why we think our product is kind of a good solution to some of the, the, the flaws that current products exist. From there, we'll go on to our uh, actual product, which is the UV dimming contact. And then after that, we'll dive a bit more into some of the details, such as how we make these, what the properties are, and why, uh, why these are actually good properties, and, and how these satisfy our requirements. So if we could have the next slide. So as we all know, the sun is a pretty good thing. It can be a lot of fun to spend the day in the sun. But unfortunately, the sun is also quite harmful as it emits dangerous UV rays. These can cause all sorts of health issues with your skin and your eyes, ranging from cataracts. So right now, there are really two solutions that exist on the market. One is to use sunglasses, which are great when you're outside. But as soon as you step inside, the sunglasses become effectively useless, and you have to take them off. An alternative solution to try to solve this has been the introduction of transition lenses. And these are normal eyewear that transition to a darkened state. Uh, upon exposure to UV, such as walking outside. The problem with this solution is that they take minutes to transition. It isn't a fast transition, so by the time you're outside, they're, they're, they finally get dark, you're probably going to be coming in, and then you have to wait for them to clear up again. In addition to these issues with the solar radiation, there are other issues, and that's with the fact that they're actually large, bulky glasses that have to go on your face. So often when, when we need sunglasses the most is when we're outside having fun. And that's often when we don't want to have something on our face. You would, would you rather play volleyball with something on your face like sunglasses or not have anything at all? Would you want to go surfing with sunglasses? And also, golfing with sunglasses is a big issue because they can often fa fall off when you're swinging and this, it's just not a good situation. So based on these things, we're proposing a new solution, an entirely new solution to this problem using contact lenses. So contact lenses are widely used across the world. Um, they're commonly used, and they've, uh, they've been in place for a long time. So uh, the issue is they don't really do much when it comes to UV radiation or solar radiation. Some of them block out UV radiation, but you're still left squinting and often have to put sunglasses on top of your contact lenses. So what we're proposing is a UV dimming contact lens, a contact lens that blocks out solar radiation a contact lens that transitions instantly as soon as you walk outside to a darkened state and then returns as soon as you walk back in. The great thing ab about these contact lenses is that they have an incredibly fast response time. These will change to a darkened state within seconds as opposed to the minutes of normal transition glasses. They're made with standard contact lens materials, so they're durable and they're comfortable just as you would expect. That also makes them very safe because we're using biocompatible polymers such as HEMA and GMA. So we're, all this is standard contact lens materials, so we're not really changing much. We're simply adding a little bit of a special ingredient. Um, if you could have the next slide. So to give you a demonstration of how these actually work, we have a quick video to show it off. So here we have our lenses, and we've exposed them to UV light. As you can see, they begin to start darken. One thing to note is that these lenses, uh, the UV light used in this demonstration isn't as strong as the, we, as the one we have in the booth. So if you get a minute, I would recommend you come check out our booth. We have a, a more representative example of where we're at with these. So you can see they're uh, darkening, they're turning blue, and then we turn off the UV light in a second here. And it goes off. And then you can see they instantly begin to fade. I'd also like to point out that they do get a lot darker in our booth. It's just due to the strength of the UV light we're using at this moment. So from here, you're probably asking, how does this transition actually happen? Well, we use something called a photochromic dye, specifically a nathropyrin, a nathropyrin that undergoes structural changes when exposed to UV light less than 380 nanometers. This additional UV light causes an energy increase in the molecule, which results in a structure change. The biggest issue with this dye, and the reason that these dyes haven't been used more often, is because they're actually very sensitive to water, and they can degrade in water. Obviously, for a contact lens, this is kind of a bad thing. You don't want contact lenses are used in aqueous environments, so how are we going to put this dye in an aqueous environment, such as a contact lens? Well, we've developed a novel nano emulsion, and this nano emulsion effectively protects the dye against water by separating it through putting it in the organic phase. So as you can see here, we have an idealized cartoon version of what our bicontinuous emulsion structure looks like. 
you can see the domain pitch should be around 100 nanometers. Alex will go into why that's the reason a little bit later. Um, you can see on the right we have our SEM image that shows uh, structures that are more on the micro size features. But uh, once again, Alex will talk more to that. You can see our organic phase contains the photochromic dye, as previously stated, along with our hemopolymer, our crosslinker, all of our polymer action is in that organic phase. And then our aqueous phase is what contains the water. So we are able to actually effectively separate this photochromic dye from the water to protect it and make, it, make sure it lasts long all day long. So to give you a quick uh, introduction to how we actually make this, we've created this little animation here. So you can see here, we simply take our organic phase, sonicate it, and then we mix our aqueous phase very simply, and then sonicate that. This is a very easy uh, synthesis. It's very fast, and it's also probably scalable. We just add it to a, a contact lens mold and then cure it at 60 degrees for one hour, and we have a contact lens that changes color in the sun. Alex is going to go over some of the details and some of our test results from this project. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. So as Matt mentioned earlier, one of the biggest competitors to this product would be transition glasses. Uh, they do pretty much the same thing. They uh, dark when you go outside, clear when you go inside, except they sit on your face instead of on your eye. So we want to kind of compare the transition times between these transition glasses and the NR contact lenses. So what we did was we took both and we put them under the same UV light and we measured their darkness as a function of time, whether darkness uh, in the plots there are normalized to their uh, maximum darkness. And something that may uh, jump out to you from the plots is that our product, which is the red curve, uh, actually transitions much, much quicker than the black curve, which is the transition uh, glasses. Actually, our results show that they transition uh, over 50 times faster. You can see this especially shows in the 50% clearing time uh, for our contact lenses, it's only three seconds, whereas for transition lenses, it can be 157 seconds or more. So picture you're wearing transition glasses, you have just come in from outside, and two minutes later, you're still, it's still dark everywhere, you're like, I can't see anything. Uh, with our contact lenses, uh, you'd walk inside, and just like that, within three seconds, uh, you'd be able to see everything clearly again. So the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is kind of the comfort aspect of the contact lens. Uh, obviously, uh, we want the lens to be comfortable for the user to wear, and one of the kind of main factors in this is how well the contact lens adheres to the tear film of the eye. Uh, if it doesn't adhere very well, then the user is going to feel like they have something in their eye the entire time, which obviously uh, is not a desirable feeling for somebody wearing a contact lens. Uh, so. To determine kind of how, how well the lens adheres to this tear film, you have to determine the wettability. And the wettability is obtained by measuring the water contact angle. Uh, this angle can be measured a variety of ways. Uh, the way we chose was using the sessile drop test. Uh, so you can kind of see an image of it here. Uh, so here's the water droplet on top of our contact lens, which is this surface here. And you can kind of see the blue lines here indicating the angles that the, water, that the droplet is making contact with the surface of the lens. Uh, to consider a lens to be uh, comfortable, you generally want a water contact angle of below 90 degrees. Uh, all of our lenses were below 90 degrees with an average contact angle of 49 degrees. Uh, so by this metric, uh, our lenses could be considered to be uh, comfortable. Uh, so let's say you go to open up your contact lens, or open up your contact lens case. Uh, you go to put it in your eye and it rips. Uh, well, you can't have a torn contact lens in your eye. Or let's say the blinking, the stress of blinking over the day ends up tearing the contact lens. Neither of these are good scenarios. So we wanted to make sure that the durability of our contact lens kind of matched up with uh, uh, contact lenses that are commercially available now. Uh, the way that we measured this durability was by performing a tensile test uh, to determine the tensile strength. Uh, so you may be wondering, what is this? A tensile test is essentially where the material is gripped at two ends and pulled, and the amount of stress needed to deform the material is measured. Uh, you can see these two plots here. Uh, we have, these are two different samples that we put through this tensile test. Um, <clears throat> now the, on the y-axis is stress, on the x-axis is a strain. And something I want to point out, we've highlighted the areas where the tensile strength is, which is the maximum uh, stress that had been applied to the material. That's uh, what's defined as the tensile strength. And both are around 0.7 megapascals. 
Uh, as you can see from what's expected in industry of 0.36 to 1.59 megapascals, uh, this 0.7 actually fits very nicely in between those, uh, those limits. So these contact lenses are just as durable as contact lenses currently available. Uh, so let's say now your lens doesn't rip when you put in your eye, that's great. Uh, let's say you take it out at the end of the day and along with a bunch of other health implications, your eye now changes color when you go out into the sun. Well, obviously we don't want the dye to leach out of the hydrogel. That would be um, a big safety issue. Um, <clears throat> so to kind of simulate uh, use case and storage, we left these, uh, we took three hydrogels, each of a different concentration of dye, centered around our uh, standard dye concentration, and we just let them uh, sit in water for two weeks. Uh, now what one would expect if the dye were to leach out of the gel, out of the hydrogel, You'd expect to see a similar absorbance curve for the water as you would for um, as you would for the dye. Now on the left here, you can see the uh, the absorbance curve for uh, for the dye, and you can see it's between 400 and 650 nanometers. Uh, now on the right side are the results of our test. Uh, so you can see uh, over this over the dye absorbance region, there is no absorbance uh, measurable. Uh, from this, we can say that the dye does not leach out of our lens. This is even after uh, two weeks of being soaked in, uh, in water. Um, so another thing is that while we, it's nice that we kind of dim, we make it more comfortable for the user, that all this, uh, the brightness has been reduced in that. But we, as Matt mentioned, there's also very harmful UV rays coming out of the sun. Uh, especially the deeper, so the shorter the wavelength, the deeper into UV, the more harmful these rays are. Uh, so what we wanted to do was kind of reduce the amount of UV that was getting to the eye even further, uh, and we did that by adding a UV blocker. The UV blocker that we added was benzophenone. Uh, you can see the absorbance curve here. Uh, so it actually starts absorbing at 300 nanometers and peaks at around 250, which is uh, closer to the deeper edge of the sun's UV emission. Um, now you may be wondering, okay, we well added a UV blocker to a lens that requires UV light to become activated. Um, well, actually, so the, as Matt mentioned previously, the dial is activated by light that's 380 nanometers or less. And as you can see here, this benzophenone has no absorbance over, uh, over that region. And so the dye can still be activated, and all the tests we've shown you so far have been performed with this UV blocker in place. Uh, so as you may have recognized from a couple of the pictures, the lens is not uh, completely transparent. It's actually a little cloudy. Uh, so we know kind of why this is. This is actually uh, due to us having a micro emulsion instead of a nano emulsion. Uh, now you're probably wondering, okay, what, what difference does that make? Why does having a nano emulsion make it transparent? Well, it's actually related to the size of the particles in the emulsion, the oil, the oil phase. And so as the, as the size of a particle becomes uh, larger on the same order of magnitude as the wavelength of light reaching it, or even, uh, or even bigger, the, the light gets, uh, <clears throat> the light gets uh, scattered fairly evenly. So you can imagine that for our size particles, which is around a uh, micron, it would scatter all visible light, uh, which is between about 400 to 700 nanometers. Uh, so you can see, uh, I have an animation here kind of showing uh, the scattering, and so this is called me scattering. And this is kind of, uh, you can see all the wavelengths being scattered there. Now when you have smaller particles, you enter the domain of Rayleigh scattering. And so with Rayleigh scattering, uh, the the degree of scattering actually decreases as the wavelength increases. So if we have particles that are under 100 nanometers, uh, you can actually see that the, while the UV does get scattered, the, longer wa the visible wavelengths are too long to uh, be, they're not affected by the uh, scattering as much, which allow them to pass through and which would allow us to have a transparent uh, hydrogel. <clears throat> Uh, the reason we weren't able to achieve this nano emulsion was because of uh, instrument limitations. And there, uh, what we would have needed, Matt mentioned before that we sonicate, uh, we would have needed a smaller tip size to, prov to provide enough energy to kind of uh, create those nano-sized particles. Unfortunately, uh, that wasn't within our budget, so we kind of worked with what we had and uh, were able to create this micro emulsion. But obviously, a next step would include trying to get this transparent uh, hydrogel. And so just to kind of summarize, uh, our group has developed a UV-activated dimming contact lens, which uh, darkens when you go outside and clears when you come back inside. Uh, this is very useful for sports such as uh, volleyball, basketball, golfing, uh, surfing, a whole, a whole bunch where basically it would be impractical to wear sunglasses. Um, this was achieved by embedding a photochromic dye into a, an emulsion hydrogel. And 
not only did it reach, did the contact lens reach most of the functional specifications we set out early on in the project, uh, it also turned out to be much faster than transition uh, lenses providing this added benefit. Uh, future steps would include trying to get that transparent uh, hydrogel, getting the nano emulsion, as well as trying out uh, different dyes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so this, in terms of uh, darkness, so this is about as dark as it gets with the kind of dye that we've played around with in terms of uh, loading into the matrix. Now this is for the, this color is called Oxford Blue. There are other colored dyes such as a uh, volcanic gray in that that can be added to make it uh, even darker, but we want to kind of stick to one dye for now. So this is, uh, we weren't able to get transmission tests just because the lenses were cloudy. Uh, so this is kind of uh, a visual appearance. That's why we normalize the darkness. A visual appearance is kind of, this is about how dark it's going to get. No, be, uh, just, because we, uh, just because we weren't able to, I guess, to get those transmission tests, we, weren't sh we couldn't, yeah. Uh, it, it's not transparent, uh, so we can't really say. We can only see how dark the dye got. Uh, different colors of dyes. I don't know if that was mentioned. We, so we can have blue, green, purple. So we can also market it as kind of an aesthetic uh, feature as well. We, we, yeah, we actually discussed that. So we've been working with the uh, Center for Contact Lens Research in the optometry building. And uh, we were going to test oxygen permeability with it, but they, didn't, they, they kind of explained to us that there wasn't really a standardized process or a standardized machine for that. So they said that there's probably kind of outside the scope of what we have here in terms of facilities. So they said they, they recommended uh, probably maybe that's something you guys can look at later down the road, but right now just really focus on what makes it special, and that's the UV light. But yeah, we've designed it using contact lens materials, so from the start. So uh, with, with that intention, we imagine it should be pretty, uh, pretty similar to normal contact lens oxygen permeability. Sorry. I'll bring up the slide here. Um, it takes uh, less than five seconds, though. So you can see here when we compare it to transition glasses, it's essentially instant. Mm -hmm. How many times? Oh, like the number of times? Yeah, cycles. Like cycles, yeah. Um, so we've done it. Uh, so they do actually degrade after a while. So we've, we're kind of marking them as daily lenses. So definitely within uh, using them within one day, you're not going to hit that limit. But we've, been, we've tested them for four months now, and really we haven't seen significant degradation, really, in terms of uh, cycling. Uh, I don't know if you have. It's, it's only really been uh, in terms of store, like we stored them in water for four weeks, and that's when we started to see the degradation. Uh, in terms of cycling, we have the lenses at our booth. Uh, we've been doing them all day. Every, every time somebody comes by, we kind of demo the, uh, the cycle, and uh, turn it off for, on for five seconds, then turn it off. Uh, and these lenses, we've actually also been testing over the past week just to make sure they're ready for the, uh, for the symposium. So they, they've been able to withstand. They haven't uh, degraded over, uh, yeah. Oh, th <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot.